Hello Greg, it's Nigel here. Um, I spotted this story in today's Sunday Telegraph and uh, it horrified me so much that I thought I would put a video out uh, about it. Uh, so this is it. Bear with me. I think it'll ring a few bells. Nothing could have prepared Audrey Revel for the sight of her daughter as she lay dying in the hospital intensive care unit. Quote, I remember calling out, Oh no! and sinking onto the bed beside her, my head in my hands, says Mrs Jane Revel. Janice, just 34, was on life support. She was emaciated, her stomach hugely swollen and her face contorted in pain. Less than a year before, Janice, though profoundly deaf and blind, had been leading an independent life caring for her baby daughter. Then, after a spell of depression, she was admitted to a psychiatric ward. For ten months, as she slowly deteriorated to the point where she could no longer sit up, eat, talk or walk, she was in excruciating pain. The sole diagnosis was, wait for it, behaviour and adjustment problems. Lying on the mattress on the floor of a room in a psychiatric unit, she was fed a cocktail of drugs and her therapy was to be isolated and restrained. When finally psychiatrists agreed to transfer Janice to a medical ward, still insisting that her condition was called by, uh, caused by willful behaviour and that she was suffering self-starvation, she was immediately admitted to intensive care. Within two weeks, in May 1999, Janice was dead. Although psychiatrists had on at least three occasions refused to allow a brain scan, insisting, insisting that her problems were psychiatric, when a scan was finally carried out, the extent of the damage to Janice's brain horrified the medical staff. Yet for ten months, during which time she was sectioned three times, and her father John and I were told we would be taken to court if we tried to remove her, we begged for medical intervention, says Mrs Revel. As we watched our gifted daughter, who was a talented musician, a skill she learnt before becoming deaf, and a vibrant young woman who had campaigned for the disabled, slowly disintegrate, we tried every avenue. But w in spite of the dreadful condition she was in, she was only moved to a medical ward when it was deemed she was suffering uh, self-starvation and dehydration. Convinced that their daughter's condition was exacerbated by uh, drugs administered in the psychiatric unit, the Revels, who now live in Peterborough, fought a five-year battle to prove medical negligence. The hospital denied the allegations, maintaining that they were vindicated when the subsequent inquest recorded a verdict of death by natural causes. At the inquest, the coroner stated that there had been no lack of care. And though the NHS Ombudsman also ruled against the Revels in 2004, the couple have refused to give up and um, are now considering taking the case to the European Court of Human Rights. Quote, It's something I promised Janice just before her life support was switched off, says Mrs Revel, who has just published a book, Take My Hand. In its foreword, Baroness Nikki Chapman, who, was her, uh, who is herself disabled, describes the story as one of humour, sadness, pain and joy, adding, almost inevitably there are clashes of Jan's needs meeting bureaucratic walls. The lack of medical understanding of her underlying condition added to the whole family's frustration and distress. The medical profession failed Janice all her life, Mrs Revel says. Even as a child she was consistently wrongly diagnosed. It was when Janice was almost two that a family member noticed uh, she seemed to have very limited vision. Though doctors told Mrs Revel several times that Janice's sight was fine and that she was making her daughter neurotic. Janice was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa, a rare and incurable disease that left, left her blind at seven. <clears throat> 
Janice was an intelligent child who coped admirably with her disability. She learnt Braille and began composing music, some of which was published. She appeared on television alongside Sir Harry Seacombe and Evelyn Lenny, the virtuoso deaf percussionist. She was equally accepting uh, when she began to go deaf. Then came the final blow. She was diagnosed with a rare neurological syndrome that meant eventually she would lose all sensation from the waist down. When Janice married and Holly, her daughter, was born in uh, December 1995, the rebels were thrilled. But then came the depression, her admission to a psychiatric unit and a subsequent sectioning. As a child, Janice had suffered several reactions to drugs, violent reactions to drugs, and her parents made sure that the unit was aware of this. Yet when Janet became aggressive and disturbed, she was given powerful drugs to sedate her. Over the next ten months, while psychiatrists insisted that her problems were merely willful behaviour and poor adjustment to motherhood, Janice became doubly incontinent, her, pal her bowels became impacted, she spent her day semi-conscious in nappies in a padded cell and in constant pain. Mrs. Revel says part of the therapy was to isolate her and leave her screaming. Staff were told to stroke her on the head as you would when training a dog and tell her she was a good girl. One doesn't need a great deal of imagination to know how frightened she must have been, not being able to see or hear, being restrained and indescribable in indescribable pain. Again, Mrs. Uh, Revel says, yet we were told that Janice was very determined and willful and that there was nothing physically wrong with her. When Janice was transferred to intensive care, it was clear that she was dying. The doctors were shocked at her condition. She had a bleeding mouth ulcers and bed sores on her feet. Her brain scan, when it was finally undertaken, indicated that she had a uh, fatal organic brain disease. One doctor told the couple uh, that he thought it likely uh, this had been caused by her drugs. Within a fortnight, the couple took the anguishing decision to switch off her life support. They knew there was no hope. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Rowell says again, I vowed to Janice that I would fight for her, and this is what I will continue to do. To see one's vibrant, intelligent daughter reduced to a pathetic, gibbering, wild woman, stripped of her dignity, and kept on a mattress on the floor, while all the time we begged and pleaded with them to recognise that her condition was medical, drove us, drove us to the verge of breakdowns. There can be no giving up now, not after witnessing what Janice endured. Sometimes, so somehow, we are going to get justice for our daughter. No one must ever be treated like this again. And it says, Take My Hand by Audrey Revel is uh, published by Trafford. I know you can get it uh, on Amazon because I've just had a look. Uh, makes you want to weep, doesn't it? Dreadful, dreadful story. And as I said earlier, um, it's just typical. To just it's one that rings bells with me. About um, I mean I don't know quite what caused uh, this poor poor lady's uh, depression in the first. But whatever it was, um, it's obvious that uh, the psychiatrist didn't want to know um, about any uh, physical causes and. Uh, I just think it's, I just, it just makes your blood boil, doesn't it? Anyway, um, I just thought I'd share that uh, with you all. And uh, thanks for listening. Um, oh, by the way, there's, there's those pictures uh, right at the end of uh, Janice and her mother. Uh, right at the beginning and right at the end, those are pictures of Janice and her mother taken off the Telegraph website. So thanks again. Bye.